Israeli army is now bombing Gaza in a way trying to demoralize the people totally, break their will, and push them out of Gaza into Egypt. That is the plan. The plan is to evacuate the land which we call Gaza Strip from the population. Gaza has two and a half million people. They would like to push as much as possible into Egypt under the so-called humanitarian corridor where the Americans and some Europeans are pressurizing the Egyptian government to open uh, the borders for these refugees. And once these refugees go into Sina, they close the borders and they create another Nakba where another tragedy for the Palestinian people will happen. So this is a plan that the Israelis have for a long time because there is inside the historical Palestine now a balance between Palestinians and the, the Israelis. And now if they would like to dominate, they need to kick out Palestinians. The plan is to kick out Palestinians from Gaza into Egypt. This is why they are doing all kinds of crimes destroying buildings, destroying suburbs, destroying hospitals. Electricity was cut, food was cut, water was cut, internet uh, is going to disappear from Gaza to push people outside Gaza into Egypt and to clear Gaza, totally destroy it and created an uninhabitable zone. That is the plan which the Israelis have in mind. And this is not a result of the last event on the 7th of October. This is a pre-planned operation, but they use this excuse to execute it. The hypocrisy of the Western media and the Western politicians against the Palestinians and against all the causes that does not belong to them is very clear. These people are justifying murder of thousands of people. They are justifying the killing of babies and infants and women and old men and the sick people in hospitals under the pretext that Israel has the right to defend itself. From our point of view, the Western world has lost legitimacy, moral legitimacy, has lost all kind of sense. When they are speaking about Ukraine, they are saying Ukraine has the right to defend itself against the Russian occupation. But when the Palestinians are trying to defend themselves against the occupations, they are becoming terrorists. And we should eliminate them. We should eradicate them. We should take them out and push them outside the borders. Destroy them. Even in the West, they are not showing the same images that we are seeing in Gaza. The media is also playing the same part of conspiracy. They don't want ordinary people to see the amount of atrocities and killing and destruction that the Israeli air jets are doing in Gaza right now. And then they talk to you about objectivity, human rights. They are the masters of hypocrisy. And it is not new to us in this part of the world. They have done this before in Afghanistan. They have done this before in Iraq. They are doing it everywhere. I don't think that me or anyone who has mind has any trust in the Western governments, Western institutions, Western media to reflect even one percent of the truth because they don't see us as humans. And the, and the minister of defense of Israel said it publicly. He said those people in Gaza are not humans. They are animals. And if they are animals, they don't deserve even to live. This does not reflect Israeli opinion only. In my opinion, it reflects the institution, the governing institution of the West. They don't see us equal in humanity. And therefore, so what if you kill 10, 15, 20,000 Palestinians? No problem. Israel has the right to defend itself. They are terrorists. You should eliminate them and kill them. And this is unfortunately the true image of the West and the true image of Israel in front of our eyes, naked. We cannot but say, you know, we need to know things as it is. There is a huge, huge, you know, war of deception taking place right now. There is a huge psychological war in media and we need to be aware of it. We need to know the fake news that they are spreading and the fake truth that they are spreading. We need to be aware of it in order to sustain reasonable understanding of the conflict in Gaza. Until now, in Gaza, at least we have more than 250 baby child killed. We have 
eight journalists killed. We have workers, humanitarian workers killed. We have ambulances destroyed, hospitals destroyed, and they are destroying the infrastructure for basic human life, including water. Gaza will be running out of food and out of water very soon. Hospitals will have no electricity and has no medical supply to treat the injured people. This is the reality. On the other hand, to justify this total genocide against the public, the civilians in Gaza, they invent stories about Palestinians killing babies, chopping their heads. And of course, under the heavy pressure and scrutiny, they started yesterday to say, no, we do not have an evidence of it. Biden, the president of America, repeated that lie in his press conference. And the White House yesterday had to say, no, we don't have, uh, we are not sure about events. This is what they do. They demonize the, the, the Palestinians. They would like the world to see the Palestinians as animals, criminals, beasts. And yesterday and the day before yesterday, Netanyahu and the Western leaders are repeating that Hamas is like Daesh, ISIS. Hamas is like ISIS. So let us eradicate them, kill them. You know, Hamas is not ISIS. Everyone knows that, you know. And in this case, this propaganda, which they are producing to the media, it means anything happens after that is justified. So killing women and men and children today, a leader of Israeli government said that the people of Gaza deserve what's going to happen to them because they had a chance to revolt against Hamas and they did not revolt against Hamas. And therefore, okay, let them pay the price for that. They are justifying genocide in Gaza and we need to be aware of it because once they do it, they can say, you know what? We have destroyed terrorism. We have secured Israel. And this security of Israel has become an, a holy grail, an icon for the Western lexicon. For securing Israel, everything is permissible. Everything is legitimate. So no one must worry about the human loss of the Palestinians. We need to remember the following facts. First, what's happening in Palestine was expected because the Israelis have been converting Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa from a Muslim mosque into a shared Muslim Jewish place. And during the last few weeks, they started stopping Muslim people from going into the mosque in the morning to allow only Jewish people to go and pray inside Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa and practice rituals. This is about Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa first. Second, the Palestinians in West Bank have been under attack by the Israeli settlers. The Israeli settlers feel, feel free to go into any town or any village and to shoot people, to burn their houses, to burn their cars, to steal things from them under the protection of the Israeli army. And the Palestinians who do not have arms, they cannot protect themselves. This has been a routine during the last two, two three years. Three, the Palestinian issue itself supposed to have a Palestinian state. And we're supposed to be celebrating this year 25th anniversary of having a Palestinian state. But what do we have? We do not have anything. We have people under pressure. We have people under occupation. We have settlers taking over West Bank and over Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. And we have also people, you know, uh, pushed out through economic problems and so on. And we have Gaza under blockade for 16 years. So. What I'm saying is, as long as there is oppression in Palestine, as long as the confiscation of the Palestinian right, as long as the attack against Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa will continue, always you will find Palestinians getting angry because that will never allow any peaceful moment in that land. Beside, the region itself, Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, is not a mosque for uh, Palestinians. It is a Muslim holy mosque. When you see people doing this in Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, definitely they are putting themselves in, 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 in front of the Islamic world, in front of the region, all of it together. So if this continues, the whole region will have chaos. The whole region will have also confrontations. In my opinion, the Israelis are making major mistake of provoking the 
the, the spirit of solidarity with the Palestinians from all over the Islamic world and the spirit of support to Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa from all over the Islamic world. And on long run, this will have huge consequences against the Israelis. Now they could win, maybe because they are using air jets. They can destroy and kill thousands of people while the Americans and the Europeans are happy. But on long run, Palestinians will not give up their right. The Muslims will never accept Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa to become a synagogue. That's normal. So basically, this conflict will continue unless there is something that people are satisfied that justice has been served. If justice is not going to be served, conflict will always be renewed. Every time people have the power to fight back, they will fight back. What can Muslim countries do? And what's your expectations? We, I think, that the Muslim countries should remember that this land, which we call Palestine, has Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa in it. And that is extremely important. And the Palestinians, if they are broken, then this Muslim world is losing control of, of, of that territory. Second, the Muslims should remember that if this continues, this feeling of injustice, this will create a lot of dynamics everywhere, a lot of tension, a lot of anger, a lot of frustration, a lot of violence, a lot of radical thinking also. This region cannot be stabilized unless the Palestinian issue is resolved. This issue will always have conflict and wars unless the Palestinian issue is resolved. So it goes beyond Palestine. It's not only for Palestinians we need to find justice. It is also for a region to be stabilized. Economically, we'll have problems. Politically, strategically, we'll have problems. Conflicts, international powers will have ways to interfere and to fuel terrorism here and there, you know, and they will divide us. This is why we need to be unified in supporting justice for Palestine and unified in condemning the brutality of the genocide of the apartheid state of Israel. If we accept now to let, up, let the Palestinians be destroyed by the Israeli war machine, then we will be weakened always. And always our land will be a, an arena for international powers to punish us and to enforce on us whatever ideology, whatever terrorist group, whatever thinking they want. This is why Palestine is basically a defense line of the interest of this Ummah. And if we don't understand that, we will be definitely suffering consequences for generations to come. Shukran Thank you very much. Shukran.